Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we're gonna paint the sun. Now I don't know about where you live, but here in Utah, in the winter, we get a really gross inversion a lot. That's because we have super high mountains next to us and the cold air gets trapped down in the valleys by warm air up above and we get blanketed in this disgusting fog of pollution. So we've been dealing with that for about the last week and yesterday was the first time I had seen the sun in a while. And so now I'm kind of getting spring fever. So I decided to paint a sun today and try and welcome in the new season. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials and let's get started. For today's painting, we're gonna use the following colors. Phthalo blue, titanium white, cadmium yellow deep hue, and cadmium red medium hue. Now, if you don't have any cad red medium, you can also use napthal crimson, which is the same color we used in the red clouds video. You can even use a cadmium red deep hue, just use a, a tiny bit of it. I'm really only gonna use one or two brushes for today's painting, and those are my angle brushes. So I have a 5 8 inch and a half inch. You'll also need a pencil. You'll also need something to trace your sun with. So I'm gonna use this paper plate and it's about seven inches around. Today I'm painting on a 12 by 24 inch stretched canvas. And this is an old canvas as you might be able to tell and I have gessoed over it. Also please notice my super professional looking fancy new easel. It's even got a place to hold my brushes. I feel like I might actually be a real artist now. So to start out, we're gonna take our plate and decide where you want your sun. And you can put it anywhere you want. You could put it coming off of the side so that your rays are spilling out this way. Um, you can put it anywhere you want. I'm gonna put mine right in the center here, but I'm not gonna put my plate like that. I mean, you certainly could have your sun right in the middle, but I think it's a little more interesting if it's going off. So I'm not gonna do it half and half because I feel like that'll cut off too much of the sun. So I'm gonna go about three quarters of the plate up onto the canvas. And then I'm just gonna take my pencil and just sketch out where that is. So there's my sun. I'm gonna start with my 5 8 inch brush. So I'm just gonna wet it in the jar, wipe it on the edge, and I'm gonna fill in my sun with a mix between the cadmium yellow deep hue and the titanium white. And I'm just gonna grab some of each and just start filling it in. I'm not worrying about blending them together because I want this to have a little bit of a painterly effect. I am focusing on my brush directionality. So I always wanna make sure that my brush strokes are following the shape of the sun. Now to get right up to the edge, notice that when I did this over here, I didn't go like that to draw the line at the edge. I used the end of the brush, the chisel edge, put it right up against that line and drag it around. Remember we talked before about thinking of this as like the, the hand on a clock. As we go around, it's pivoting in the middle and following that line. So I'm not going like this because at some point I'm gonna lose control of the shape of that brush. So it's like this and it pivots either way. Once I've got that line drawn, now I can go at it on the edge. But if you try and draw that edge with the flat part of your brush, remember the harder you push, the whiter it gets. And at some point those bristles will go outside of your line and then you're gonna have to work harder to make a nice sharp line. And your circle's gonna get bigger and bigger. We are gonna paint a couple of layers on this sun. So 
Don't focus on making highlights and lowlights or anything right now. Just get it filled in. Now we're going to start with our rays, but instead of just coming straight out and making rays all over the place, I'm going to focus on where they're coming from first. And the reason for that is I know that when I try to draw something coming out at regular intervals around a circle, sometimes I tend to get my angles off and I'll have everything coming from here and kind of squished looking. So to combat that, since I know that I have an issue with that, I'm just going to mix up a fairly similar color to that. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to draw almost like, almost like a petal. So about like that. And I'm going to do that all the way around and make sure that you think about not this one being next to this one so much, but this one coming straight out from the curve here, if that makes sense. If you, if you focus on, okay, now I'm going to put one next to this one. You're going to be looking at this one's angle and this one will be at a more up and down angle where it should be slightly more off to the right. So I'm going to draw another petal and it doesn't matter if they touch or not. It doesn't matter if they're the same size or shape. You're just focusing on your angle right now. So again, I'm going to do another one here. That's going to be at more of an angle this way coming off of here, not in line with this one. So here, if this helps you think of it this way, draw a line from where you want your ray to come out. Focus on this angle between this line and the curve at being a 90 degree angle on each side. If it's 90 degrees, then it's out the, the right direction. If it's slightly smaller on one side and larger on the other, then you've got it angled too much one way or the other. So now I'm going to draw my petal around that or my ray. See, now it's angled off that way rather than in line with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and fill all of these in. So the next thing we're going to do is extend these and decide what kind of a shape you want right now. You can make every one of them as long and flowy as you want them to be. You can make every other one short. You can do whatever you like. I'm going to kind of go with every other one being a little bit shorter than the previous one. So to do this, I'm going to use the chisel edge. Remember that this long tip will always drag. It doesn't matter which direction you're going. You want to flip it around and make sure that that tip is dragging. So if I start down here, my brush is going to be pointed down. If I decide to start up here, it's going to be pointed up. Okay. So I'm going to decide which one I want to start with. And I think I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to make this one kind of longer. It might go off the edge of the canvas a little bit. And since we're going to fill all of this in, it doesn't really matter what it looks like in here right now. So I'm going to come from the center and just kind of start giving it an interesting shape. And my short ones, I think I'm just going to go and kind of connect these ends. So because I'm starting up here and not down in here, remember the tip of my brush is pointed up. If you get two ends that are angled away from each other and you don't know how to connect them, that's totally okay. Just make one go off on its own because each one of these can have little tendrils of light coming off. This is your sun. You can make it do whatever you want it to do. All right, 
Now on these longer ones, I'm gonna start shaping them into this petal formation at the bottom. And I wanna make sure that my rays are thinner at the top and then get wider as we go down. So remember the homework that we did about brush control? That's gonna come into play here. So to get that fatter line, I just pushed harder. So again, I'm gonna start up here with very light pressure. And as I pull the brush back, I'm slowly adding more pressure until I have a nice fat line. And make sure that all of your rays don't go the same direction. Like, look, I've got these two rays and they're going the exact same movement. And these two are going the exact same movement. If you do happen to do that, I'm gonna show you how to fix that so it doesn't look like your sun is just spinning like a pinwheel. And because we haven't painted the background yet, you do have some room to fix anything you don't like. You'll just wanna make sure that that part is very, very dry when we start painting the background, and then you can just paint over it. And the reason I haven't painted the background yet is because I wanna make sure that the sky has this flow to it, kind of like the sun rays. And because yellow is, it's really hard to cover blue with yellow. If you really want to paint your background first so you don't have to worry about painting around it, that's fine. I would just recommend that you paint your sun in white over top of the blue before you try the yellow. Otherwise it, the blue will glow through and you'll have a green sun. And if you want a green sun, that's totally cool too. See, so right there, I didn't feel like I could bring those two lines together and keep it a nice shape. So I just let that line be out on its own and then I'll just bring it around and connect that. Now I'm just gonna go and make some of these little detail swoops and refine the shape however I want. And I'm using my half inch angle brush for this one because I know I'm gonna be doing some shapes that are a little bit more delicate than what I did in here. You really can make these as elaborate or as simple as you want. You can make them super curly or straight. You can give them lots of little detail pieces or none at all. Whatever you prefer, whatever you're comfortable with. Now right here where I talked about these two looking exactly the same, this is where I can make them look a little bit different. So I'm gonna take one off of here and give it a little curl on the end. That might be a shape that takes a little bit of practice or maybe you need to use a smaller brush if you're not real comfortable with it. 
And I think I'm actually gonna do just a little bit of a longer tail on the end there. Likewise, this one and this one look the same. So we're gonna change that up a bit. Take that all the way off the edge. Now, because I made this one wider, it almost looks like this is a little offshoot of this one. Okay, now we're gonna paint in our background before we do the highlights and lowlights on our sun. So I have my 5 8 inch brush and it's cleaned off and I've got my phthalo blue and some fresh titanium white because I'm still gonna use this titanium white when I start doing the sun. So I don't wanna get any blue in my yellow and vice versa. So I'm gonna do really the same thing I did here. I'm gonna get some blue and some white See, I've got kind of blue on one side, white on the other side. They're not mixed together. And I'm gonna fill in around these swirls really the same way I did this. So I'm gonna start with the edge of my brush and get right up against the edge of the swirl. And then I can start filling it in. So I'm making sure that all of my brush strokes really go the same direction as my swirls because I want the sun or I want the sky to be really dynamic just like the sun. So this is one of the main reasons that I painted the sun first because since I'm not trying to blend this blue and white together, you're gonna see the same movement in the sky that you see in the sun. So if there's something you didn't like, one of the little points got away from you or it was too long or whatever, you can paint over it here as long as it's dry, as long as the yellow on the sun is dry. For the most part, I am using this brush on the chisel edge and then filling in the larger spots with the flat part of the brush. So when I go around these, I'm not trying to cut it in flat. It's the edge of the brush, just like when we did the rays. Take your time with this part. You don't have to do it fast. I am gonna put this into time-lapse so you don't have to watch me do this the whole time because it's gonna take me a little bit. I will let you know how long it took me at the end.
Okay, so painting the blue background took me roughly 30 minutes to do. So I tell you that because I don't want you to struggle with it and feel like you have to do it fast. Just take it at your own pace and make sure that you put as much attention into these edges as you need to. Now what we're gonna do is start doing the highlights and lowlights in our yellow part. And I left these white spots there because I had intended to put the blue in between, but then I decided I didn't want to. So I'm gonna fill those in with yellow as I go. But what we're gonna start with is the circle here. Now I'm gonna keep my circle, the circle part of the sun separate from the rays. But if you wanna blend them in, that's up to you. So now I've got my cadmium red medium hue, which is more of a bright, intense red orange. So I've got some white and some yellow and the orange. And I'm gonna start by taking the white yellow mixture that I did in the first place. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna put the low lights with the orange throughout the entire thing, but you certainly could if you want to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide where I want my orange. And I think I want my orange mostly on this side. And I can bring a few streaks into the middle, but on this side I want it to be more of the yellow-white mixture. So I've got my yellow-white and I'm actually gonna start by just adding some here. And I'm laying it on fairly thick. And now I'm gonna grab just a tiny hint of my orange. Can you see how much I have on there? Just a little bit. And I'm gonna streak it over top of that wet paint. And then just kind of blend it in. If I decide I want more, I'll just grab a little more. If I get too much, then I can just grab a little yellow and smooth it over top. So again, I'm gonna get some white yellow Make a streak up through here. Grab a tiny hint of my orange. Streak it into it. And then I can kick it back with some solid yellow if I need to. Because the yellow is so transparent, I'm not worried about it completely covering that red. It'll just help tone it down a bit and smooth it around. And because I've already painted the sun with the yellow-white mixture, I don't have to worry about covering the entire thing. I'm just getting some streaks of color on there that I like. There's some, the orange, the yellow, there's some streaks of white. I think I'm gonna put a tiny little streak of red right in there. And then on the other side, I'm just gonna do the exact same thing, but with just yellow and white. And I might put a slightly stronger emphasis on the white on this side. And of course, there's still a hint of the red on my brush. I'm okay with that. And I think I want my center to be a little bit brighter with the white. So you can just kind of play with that until it looks like what you want it to look like. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing throughout the rays. Make sure that your blue is completely dry before you do this because you wouldn't wanna drag any of that blue into here and get kind of a muddy green mixture. I'm gonna move down to my half inch angle brush for this part. And then again, decide where you want the low lights to be. I'm gonna keep mine toward the bottom here so it helps separate the ray from the actual sun and then kind of along the this edge here so as it comes around it's going to go from the top edge around to on the other side it will be the bottom edge but you can put them wherever you want they can be really random if you like so again I'm going to start with some yellow and some white pretty chunky can you see how much paint I have on there quite a bit and fill in that little spot and then just start smoothing it down the edge. 
wherever I think I'm going to put that orange is where I'm concentrating this right now. And then a tiny bit of orange. And brighten it up and blend it in with a little yellow. And I'm going to grab just a little white. So that I don't end up getting too dark. And make sure that your brush strokes are similar to the shape that you're working on. red streak and blend it with some yellow. You do want to work a little quickly here when you're doing the the red and I don't necessarily mean your brush strokes. I just mean, you know, don't put the red on there and then go fill in other spots and think that when you come back, you can blend it because once it dries, you won't be able to blend it. You'll just be painting over it. And where the yellow is so transparent, you'll still see the line from the red. If that happens where you can't get a blend you can let it dry completely, paint over it with white, and then come back and do it again. Once you've done all of your red, then just make sure you get some white in there. That What this is gonna look like is the white is gonna look really um, like the hottest part of the sun. It's gonna help bring it a nice warmth where the red is almost going to seem like a little bit of a cooler part of the sun. So you don't you don't really want to use one without the other. Try and use them both. So I'm going to do this last part here and then I'm going to throw you into time lapse for a minute. So again, just right up along that edge that I'm gonna make warm along the bottom. A little bit of orange. A little bit of yellow. If you end up working with your paint really thick and you keep going over it and over it and over it, you might notice that you start to pull some paint away. If that's the case, let it dry and then come back over it. When you see that your paint is pulling away, the more you go over it, the more you're gonna pull paint away. It's not gonna all of a sudden stop. If 
if I get a spot like that, which I'm sure I will, but if I get a spot like that, I'll show you what I mean. And then a little white highlight. And these colors don't have to blend perfectly. You can leave them really streaky. Streaks are fun. Right here, I kind of drew the edge over top of the one next to it. And you can make those decisions as you go. Right here, I kind of took my yellow over my blue. That's okay, I'll just grab a little bit of white and lightly go over it there because the white is more opaque than the yellow. Here's another thing that you can do on these narrow areas. Let me wipe off my brush so I can show you. So right up in here, rather than trying really hard to get the orange on one side and the white on the other side, let me show you a little trick. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow. And since I'm gonna be starting from up here and my brush is pointing up, this is the side that I put the orange and the yellow on because I want it on this edge, okay? Now on the other side, I'm gonna flip it over and on the other side, I'm gonna grab a little white. So I've got orange and yellow on one side and white on the other side. And now if I come up here and put a little pressure, as I go down, it kind of deposits the colors like that. So I'll get a slight highlight on one side and more of the low light on the other side. I actually want a little bit more right up through here. Really warm that part up. So if you haven't been real comfortable using an angle brush on the chisel edge before, I think after doing this painting, you will be much more comfortable with it.
All right, I decided to jump over here because I kept sticking my hand in wet paint. So now that I'm on this side, I'm gonna put my low light along the bottom edge here. carried away there. We'll just throw a little extra white in it. So again, on this one, I'm gonna load up a little bit of the red on one side and a little bit of the yellow white on the other side of my brush. Start at the end. And that'll help me get a little bit of my highlight and low light without having to try and squeeze into such a small area. Now once you're done filling in all of the sun rays, you can go over it if you like and outline it in black or white or whatever you want. I'm still not sure if I'm going to or not. I may just leave it with the soft edges like what I'm getting now, but I may decide to go over it afterwards and outline it. We'll see. You know what? I just realized that there's something that I do when I'm using this brush that I don't think that I've ever explained to you before. So let me finish up what I'm doing right here and then I'll show you. Okay, so when I'm doing little curved shapes like this and I'm using the edge of my brush let me load up, I'm gonna get some orange on one side, orange yellow, and a little white on the other side. The way I'm getting the graceful shape is I'm not trying to keep my hand stationary like this and pull my arm around. I'm turning the brush as I go. So my arm is moving, yeah, but as I go, I'm gonna start rolling the brush in my hand. You see that? You can see that I didn't go like this and I'm not turning my arm while keeping the brush stationary. The brush is actually moving. So while I did that, my brush started out flat like this. And as I came down around the curve, I slowly tilted it until it was like that. So watch. So I'm gonna start here. Notice my brush is flat. It's horizontal. And as I come around, I slowly start turning it until now my brush is vertical. So that, if you've had a hard time doing smooth curves with an angle brush, that's gonna help you. So focus on that while you do this. 
So again here I'm going to start vertical and as I come I'm going to curve it almost horizontal and then vertical again. So for the most part there while I was doing that edge my hand was stationary. It was really just my fingers turning the brush. So let's do that up here too. So I'm going to start with my brush horizontal and as I come around my brush turns and now it's vertical. So most of the movement while I'm painting here is in my hand, not my arm. or it's in my fingers, in fact. Notice how right here where I'm doing the little strokes, my hand is planted on my canvas. It's not moving from that spot. I'm not dragging my arm around. It's just my fingertips. So be aware of things like that while you're painting. You know, if you find that you're having a hard time, stop and think to yourself, why? Why am I having a hard time? Is my hand moving too much? Is it not moving enough? What part am I moving while trying to do this? Especially where you're doing fine areas of detail. It's easier if you can find the movement to the tip of your fingers. Because when you're trying to do it with your whole arm, the teeniest, tiniest movement in your arm is going to translate to a large movement on the canvas. So keep your arms stationary and just, it's easier to make these teeny tiny movements with just the tips of your fingers than it is with your whole arm. Same thing there with the curl. I don't know if you could tell, but my hand did not move. It was just my fingers. Actually, I'm going to bring this one in front since it's the center one. I feel like it's my strongest one. So I'm going to bring it in front of both, both of the ones that are along its side. And there you've painted the sun. I hope that this painting helps get you in the mood for spring. I know that I'm definitely ready for it. From here, you could let it dry and then really amp up the highlights and low lights. Go in and add some super bright white areas, some deeper red areas. You could outline it in black or white. I thought about it, but I decided in the end I like kind of the blazing softness, so I decided not to. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, please feel free to share your finished paintings on my Facebook page. There's a link to the description below. I may decide sometime in the near future that I want to do a moon companion piece to this. So let me know if you would be interested in seeing something like that. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.